Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to be working with inequalities with absolute value. Now, we've dealt with absolute value uh, before when we had equations, and if you remember correctly, we ended up taking it and splitting it apart and working two problems out as we did this. Okay, because when you take the absolute value of it, you normally got two solutions out of that. Well, we're going to be doing the same thing that we're doing there as we're doing here with inequalities. It's going to be the same process, um, but now we have to deal with our inequalities. Well, when we look at our inequalities, when you have less than, you have an and statement here. Okay? So we're dealing with it in kind of like we did compound. We're basically combining compound inequalities with the absolute value. That's what you're ending up here with. So you got to know that when you have the less than right here, you ended up with this and statement. And when you have this absolute value, you're going to split it off like we did here and create these two different uh, inequalities. So we end up with these compound inequalities right here all the way down. And when we do this, when you split this, remember, you got to take this one and this. That gets us x plus 2 is less than 11. But then you also want the opposite of this one right here. Well, when you take the opposite of this, you flip that inequality here in order to make it where you can solve this. So you have, end up with this x plus 2 is less than 11, and x plus 2 is greater than negative 11. See what we did there? We took that 11 here, we changed the sign of it, but then we also flipped that inequality. Okay? So as we go through this, you kind of see what's going on. We still solve it just like you normally solve your inequalities. Add the off inverse plus negative 2, plus negative 2 to both sides, you end up with x is less than 9. Well, that's one part of it, but then you've got to come over here and you've got to solve this one. Add, add the inverse again, plus negative 2, plus negative 2 to both sides, x is greater than negative 13. Now we take this and we start and we put it on the graph. I put it on the graph first and then I came up with this. It makes it a little bit easier in order for you to see what's going on, right? Well, x is greater than negative 13. Fine, come over here to negative 13. It's an open circle because it doesn't include thir negative 13. And it goes to the right because it's greater than it. Everything greater than it is a part of this deal. So open circle to the right. Then we graph this, x is less than 9, go to 9, open circle again, because it doesn't have a little line underneath it, and it goes to the left, it's less than it. But this is an and statement. So you're talking about everything in between here, where it intersects into those two things, right? And I know it's an and statement, because my absolute value is isolated, it's all by itself, right? And I have this less than symbol here. Well, this less than symbol tells me it's an and statement. That means that it's everything in between here. That's what allows me to kind of see what's going on here. And then as you solve it, you, you recognize negative 13 is less than x is less than 9. So everything in between those two numbers is your solution set. That's what you have there. Okay, so that's our and statement. Well, let's take a look at our or statement. All right, well, we have our or statement. The absolute value of x minus 4 is greater than 3. All right, well, this is our or statement. And it, it could have been greater than or equal to. That's fine. Still would have been our or statement because I'm looking at the actual greater than or less than statements to tell me which statement I'm looking at. So greater than or statement. So we have this or statement. Now, I split it up again, x minus 4 is greater than 3, and then I did the same thing over here. x minus 4, flip the inequality, is less than, and flip the sign of our number behind it, negative 3. And then we just solve. Okay? We went through this one first, add 4 to both sides. x is greater than 7. Add 4 to both sides. x is less than one. And then I took and I graphed it. Well, x is less than one. One goes this way. Doesn't include the one. No line underneath it. And then x is greater than seven. Open circle. To the right, I have an or statement. x 
less than 1, or x is greater than 7. It kind of gives you that nice flow to it. This is, you're going to have to split these up in order to see it. Okay. Now, that, that's what both of these numbers at, at the end here, they were both positive here. Okay. That, that kind of gives you this understanding of what's going on here. When you look at these others, you have your infinite solution and you have your no solution. But now look at this. The difference between these and those others is this right here. Is all, this is isolated. That's a negative number. Okay? So this is an infinite solution. And I don't have to do any work with this because when I look at it, it makes sense. Look at what you're saying. If you take the absolute value of this number, it's going to be greater than, it's going to be more than it, negative 11. Well, it doesn't matter what number I put into here. When I take the absolute value of that number, it is a positive number. And all positive numbers are greater than negative 11. That makes this an all real numbers are infinite solution. And that, that was the easiest uh, def or explanation I can give you for why this is an infinite solution. Right? All of this, when I take the absolute value of it, is always going to be greater than this negative 11. Because it's always going to be positive. That's what kind of tells you this. Okay? Now, this is a no solution or zero uh, solution. Okay? The absolute value of x plus 2 is less than negative 11. And it's kind of just the opposite of this, right? There is not a single number I can put into this that will be less than negative 11. It just isn't going to happen. So once you have the absolute value isolated, then you look at this number. Is it a positive? Is it a negative? If it's a positive, you're going to have an or statement or an and statement. If it's a negative, you're going to have an infinite solution or a no solution. And then you just look at the inequality. Well, if it says the absolute value is greater than that number, you have an infinite solution. If it says it's less than it, you have a no solution. Okay? That's what you're looking at. Okay? All right, so now we're gonna work some of these problems out. Okay? So, first things first. Is it at, it's the absolute value less than or equal to two? Well, the absolute value is isolated. Okay, that's true. It's a positive two, so I either have an and statement or I have an or statement. Okay, so when I look at it, I'm gonna look at the inequality. It's less than, less than means that I have an and statement. So now all I'm gonna do is solve it. I know I have an and statement. Set it up, negative 8 minus 8x less than or equal to 2, just like we did before. And we're going to do this other one, negative 8 minus 8x. I'm going to flip the inequality, greater than or equal to, and I'm going to change the sign of our number here. It becomes negative 2. And I'm going to solve both of these, and then I'm going to graph it, and then I'm going to write write it out where you can read it, okay? Now, just solve our, our inequality. Add eight to both sides. That leaves me with negative eight x less than or equal to eight plus two is 10. I'm gonna divide by negative eight on both sides. That gives me x. When I divide by a negative number, you flip that inequality again x is greater than or equal to 10 over negative 8, which reduces down to a negative 5 over 4. Okay. Same thing over here. Exact same setup. All right. Add 8 to both sides. Leaves me with negative 8x, except I leave the inequality. Keep going. Gets me 6. Divide by negative 8. Divide by negative 8, flip my inequality, and then you end up with negative 3 over 4. Now all I need to do is graph this. Okay. 
remember the further left you go, the smaller the number. So negative 5 over 4, negative 3 over 4. Both of them are closed circles, so this is a closed circle. And x is greater than this number, so it goes this way. Okay? x is less than or equal to negative 3 fourths, closed circle, goes to the left, less than that number. Now this is an AND statement, so it's this intersection here that is our answer. Okay? Now we want to be able to write this, so we're going to rewrite this. And we're going to flip this one. So negative 5 fourths is less than, negative 5 fourths is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to negative 3 fourths. Okay? Now you're going to have to be able to write this one and this on our work today. And then I'm going to show you something else when we actually show how to work the work on what you're else going to have to do. But if you can get to this point, the rest of it's not a problem. Okay? That's your and statement. Now let's take a look at it. what I, I think it's a more statement, but we'll look at it. Look at this. They put the absolute value on the other side. Well, we don't want that. We're going to switch this around right at the very beginning. We're not even going to mess with it. We're going to move everything from the right side and everything from the left side. We're going to flip them. And when we do that, we're going to flip our inequality. So we're going to take the absolute value of x plus 8, move it onto this side. We're going to put the 1 over here on this side. And we're, when we do that, we flip that inequality. And then we look at it. Okay, so the absolute value is isolated. This is a positive number, so we got an and or an or statement. All right, then we check the inequality. Well, it's greater than, that is, yeah, or statement, or statement, okay? And guys, sometimes I still look back at my stuff just to make sure I got the correct statement. It helps, okay? So now, set up two inequalities x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 1, x plus 8 less than or equal to, I flip the inequality, and then I change the, the sign of the number behind it, negative 1, right? Just like we did before when we solved the equations, or equations with absolute value. Set, them, set up both of them, right? Add negative 8 to both sides, x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Add negative 8 to both sides. x is less than or equal to negative 9. Set up your graph. Negative 9, negative 7. x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Close dot. To the right, x less than or equal to negative 9, close dot. To the left, this is an or statement. x is greater than or equal to negative 7, or x is less than or equal to negative 9. That's the setup right here. Now you've got to be able to graph this, you've got to be able to write this. Okay? They both are true. All right? Now let's take a look at what your homework's going to look like. This is on Get More Math. It's going to be the same setup, except they're going to ask for a few other things. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Set up, solve, and graph. So it wants you to set it up, solve it, and graph it. Only set up, work until you have a compound inequality, then write that inequality here. Okay. We're going to set it up, but we're going to work through it first. So we know that we need to set it up. We need to have the solution set here. And then we're going to have to have graph here. So we know we're going to have all of this, all three of these things. All right. So let's set this up first. First thing we're going to do is we're going to flip it. Make it easy to work with. Okay. So the absolute value of 7 plus 7x is less than or equal to 7. And all I did was I flipped it around so that we can work, work this problem. All right. 
Now, we have an and statement. Yes, an and statement. Less than, less than is our and statement. So, then we're going to take and we're going to say 7 plus 7x is less than or equal to 7. And then 7 plus 7x is greater than or equal to negative 7. All right. This first box right here, the only setup, they want you to set it up using the center part so that you understand what you're looking at. All right, so the absolute value of 7 plus 7x. And what they have is negative 7 is less than or equal to the absolute value of 7 plus 7x less than or equal to 7. That's that first box, I believe. So let's see if we can set that up. I think that's what that is. Oh, they don't want the absolute value. Okay, so they don't want the absolute value. Okay, they want it set up like that. That's how they want to set it. Okay, so here, once I had this, now I can set it up like this, just like you are going to at the end when we showed the solution set, they want it to look like this so that you know what you're looking, how to set up the two inequalities. That's what they're trying to get you to see. What do the two inequalities look like? Okay, that's what it is. So we, we got this, we have this first part right here. Okay, so it is negative seven. Negative seven is less than or equal to seven plus seven X is less than or equal to seven. That's your first part. That's it right there. Okay? This right here. All of this came from just splitting this up and recognizing what's going on here, right? I split this into my two inequalities, my compound inequalities, and that's what I wrote right there was my compound inequality. Okay? So that's what they want you to be able to do. Then they want you to get your solution set. Solution set. Which is just solving it. Okay? So we're just going to solve it. All right. Add negative 7 to both sides. Well, I get you 7x less than or equal to 0. Okay? 7 plus negative 7, 0. That's fine. A lot of y'all freak out when you see this. It's not. It's fine. Okay? Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Well, x is less than... Ooh, that's ugly. Less than or equal to 0. Because 0 divided by 7 is 0. Okay? So x is less than or equal to 0. No problem here. That's fine. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Add negative 7 to both sides. 7x less than or equal to negative 14. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. x is less than or equal to negative 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Greater than or equal to, sorry, I said less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, negative 2. Say it correctly. Okay. Then we graph. Now here, here, we have 0, we have negative 2. Okay. X is less than or equal to 0. Close dot. To the left, X is greater than or equal to negative 2. Close dot. To the right, everything in between here is your answers. But we want a solution set. In other words, it's going to look like this, but we got to rewrite it. Okay, so negative 2. And I take the one that is greater than and I flip it. Okay, so negative 2 becomes less than or equal to x, and I set it up so that it reads nice and nicely. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x. x is less than or equal to 0. That's your solution set that goes in there. Okay? The hardest part you're going to have throughout this whole thing is writing these things right here. Once you figure out how to write these, the rest of it becomes easier. Okay? So there. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. There we go. And notice, once we wrote this solution set right here, look at what it did for us. 
it put the numbers in there, and it set it up so that we can graph it. Okay, so get this correct, and it'll plug it in down here for you. All right. So once you have these, it becomes easier. Now all you got to do is graph. Well, it's a closed circle, so I need to come here and find my closed circles, and it's closed on both sides, right? It, it doesn't split off. It's two closed circles, so I want that. So here and here, and we have a good answer, okay? From there to there, and it looks good all the way down, all right? Go to our answer sheet right here, and that's exactly what we have. All right, that's an and solution, and solution. All right, let's take a look at an or solution here. All right, and you're gonna have uh, fractions in this stuff sometimes, it's fine. It's not a big deal if you have fractions. Okay. All right, same thing. Same setup all the way through. Okay. Set up, solve, and graph. Exact same thing. We want to flip this, make it easier on us. Okay. Absolute value of negative 7x plus 9, absolute value greater than 2. All right, set up our two inequalities. Negative 7x plus 9 is greater than 2, and negative 7x plus 9 less than 2. Now, this should be an or Oh, negative two. Sorry. Make sure you get that, because otherwise that's going to mess you up. Uh, this should be an OR statement. It should be an OR statement. So our setup on our OR statements should be here and here. And I know it's an OR statement. That's greater than. Once I flipped it, it was greater than. Okay. Had my absolute value isolated with the OR, the greater symbol showing it. So I should be able to put in this and give me a good answer here. Sure. Yeah, or statement. Okay. So negative seven, negative seven x plus nine uh, greater than two, or negative seven x plus nine less than negative two. That's my setup. Okay. Yeah, there's my setup. Now all I need to do is get my solution. All right, so solve them. Solve them all the way down. All right? I had negative 9 to both sides. Okay. Negative 7x greater than negative 7. Okay. Divide by negative 7. Divide by negative 7. When I do that, I flip that inequality. So x is less than... A negative divided by negative is positive. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So x is less than 1. Or, and I'm going to solve this one. Add negative 9. Add negative 9 gives me negative 7x less than negative 11. Divide by negative 7. Divide by negative 7. x is greater than... When I flip, do that, I flip the inequality, divide by negative 7, x is greater than 11 over 7, okay? So it's one of those. Okay, so far so good. x is less than 1, open circle to the left, x is greater than 11 over 7, Open circle to the right. I have my I have my solution here. X is less than one, or x is greater than eleven sevenths. And here I have my graph. So when I graph it on here, this is what it should look like. Okay. 
This is what goes in here. X less than one or X is greater than, use your fraction bar, 11 over seven. Is that correct? 11 over seven. Set it up correctly. Yep, okay. And guys, before you plug it in here, check to make sure. You don't want to do extra ones that you don't have to do. Okay? Check to make sure it's written down just like you got it written down over there. Okay? There we go. And notice they put them in here for us. Okay? Then we're going to come down here. Yep, I want the open circle. Open circle and an arrow, that's what I want. Okay? Open circle, this direction open circle, this direction. Notice that, okay? If I'd wanted a closed circle, I'd have went to there, okay? Got it? And there we go. And that is what your work is going to look like, okay? There's a lot of little steps in this, okay? Be careful with this. You don't wanna miss one of these just because you accidentally didn't put a negative sign on there or you put the inequality in the wrong direction on accident. Okay? You want to do these, you only want to do them once if you can. Watch the way your inequalities go. Be, remember that when you multiply or divide by negative, you flip the inequality. Don't forget your rules. Having fractions are fine. Don't freak out when you have those. Make sure that your graph looks like it should before you hit the check mark to see if it's good. Okay? If you do those things, you take it, take it slow, work through them, you're going to be fine. Okay, uh, I don't believe I have any infinite solutions or no solutions in these, but there might be a few. Check to make sure, but you should be good. If you have any questions or you need any help, let me know.